180, 180. Folks, 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 chill out. Let's explore this. Hey, curious kids, Kevin here. Today on A Place Called Space, we are talking about where does space start? Well, right now, different organizations define space differently. Some say it starts at 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles, and others say it starts at 80 kilometers, or 50 miles. Why is it different? Today, we're going to dive into it. Around 1960, the FAI, which is the International Aeronautics Federation, said space started at 100 kilometers. This is commonly referred to as the Kármán line. In 1956, Theodore von Kármán was calculating how high a plane could fly and still achieve lift. That's the upward force in flight. And he came up with 83.8 kilometers. Wait, that's not 100 kilometers. Well, it's believed that his calculation of too high for flight was misinterpreted as the start of space. And then the committee just decided to uh, round it up to an even 100 kilometers. They're like, oh, this is a nice round number. Hmm. I mean, that doesn't seem too scientific there now, does it? Okay. In the 1950s, the United States Air Force said space starts at 50 miles, or 80 kilometers, because again, it's a nice round number, and it's the end of the mesopause. So they gave astronaut wings to pilots who went up that high. Now, they couldn't achieve lift up there, but what they could do is like shoot into it, go high and then glide, float, and come back down. Now, NASA, right? What do they say? They're a big organization. Well, up until 2005, they agreed with the FAI of 100 kilometers for the start of space. But in 2005, NASA changed it to 80 kilometers, that 50 mile mark. This occurred after the company Scaled won the X Prize for going to space and the FAI gave their two pilots astronaut wings. They went up to space twice at 103 kilometers and 112 kilometers. Wait, so then why did NASA drop its definition of space from 100 to 80? Well, it seems to have been done to be consistent with the US military, so there's no differences there, and that they could also give astronaut wings to three pilots who flew the X-15 plane up that high. Again, we're not seeing anything too scientific here. So right now, summer 2021, the United States' organizations of NASA, the FAA, and the United States military are the only ones who define space at 80 kilometers or 50 miles. However, in 2018, Jonathan McDowell of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics did a study about where satellites fall. He discovered that 50 miles or 80 kilometers is the true lower edge of space. It's here that the chemical composition of the atmosphere changes drastically and satellites that dipped below this altitude broke loose of their orbit and made a fiery return to Earth. Now, because of McDowell's research, the FAI has made a statement in 2019 that they want to have an international workshop to determine if they need to have a redefinition of the boundary of space. Now, we're still waiting for this to happen, but it seems that the evidence is compelling and finally a scientific case for where space begins. With the recent flights of Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, a lot of people are asking this question, where does space start? So please share it with a friend so that they know to where the history is and where it might go from here. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below and subscribe if you haven't already. Always be curious.